Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to route your Nexus 6P on the latest MTC 19T build of Android 6.01, which is the May 1st upgrade, on a Linux PC. So this one is based off Ubuntu and it's, you might be able to tell, it's the Mint distribution, uh, as suggested by John Harleen here. So if I pronounce your last name wrong, but he suggested me to do a tutorial on a Linux PC. So here it is and let's get started. So first off, so we're going to start by downloading the Android SDK tools, which is available on the developer.android.com forward slash studio uh, webpage. That will be in the first link in the description down below. So what we need to do is download these, just the command line tools here. So scroll down a little bit and click on download options, and then further scroll down past the different platforms to just get the platform tools, uh, sorry, the command line tools section. And what you want to do is click on the Linux one. So it is still quite big. Um, I don't want to repackage these. Well, I might, but this is probably the best way of doing things. So we're going to save the file here. It is a TGZ compressed zip. So that'll take about four minutes, which is pretty good. So I'll be back when this finishes downloading. On a second note, while that's downloading, we can go ahead and download the other files that are required for this process. Obviously, we're going to need a custom recovery. In this case, we'll be using TWRP, the latest version, of course, of anything. That will be the second link. Uh, don't download this link. You want to scroll down and download this one. The one above downloads the MD5 file for that, for this image. I'm going to save this file as well, and I'll just go up in the top corner. And then we're moving on to our third thing. We're going to use the latest SuperSU beta, which supports Android N as well. But we're going to be using it on Marshmallow. And this is just the standard, it's not systemless, I'm not going for a systemless route here. So I'm just going to download this. That uh, link will be probably the third one in the more info. I'm going to hit save file as well. I'm going to wait for all of our files to finish downloading. And afterwards we're going to start by configuring our the Android SDK tools. And we'll get started from there. Alrighty, so as you can see we've finished downloading everything. So I'm going to navigate to the folder, you can just click on that little icon there if you're using Firefox and that'll bring us to our downloads folder or whichever folder that you've pretty much saved your files in. So right now we're going to unzip or extract the Android SDK uh, TGZ file, TARC file. So you can just double click and open it with the archive manager or any archive manager you might have. So the extracted ones are 607 megabytes. I hope this is the right thing. So it looks like it's done already, so just drag it out, extract it, and open the folder, and we're going to see an SDK readme. So I believe um, from, we just run Android, I think. Now, this is from memory. We'll run in terminal, and we might require the JDK, but no. Uh, luckily, I assume the JDK, or Java Development Kit, is already pre-installed and all that. So we're going to wait for it to download all its uh, repository listings and what we're going to do is uncheck build tools and I mean you can update the Android SDK tools but we won't do that. We just need to make sure our SDK platform tools are checked and you can see it's not installed right now. Let's check that no other ones are being downloaded. Oh, we can, we'll deselect all, right, and then we'll just make sure the platform tools are checked because that is all, that is the one package that we need. We're going to click on that license, we're going to hit accept and we're going to hit install. So this will download the platform tools which includes ADB, fastboot and all the things that we need here. So right now it's going to install the package. So it's done, we can hit close and we can see that's installed and you can find it in the platform tools folder right there. So you can see we have fastboot and ADB. Now what I'm going to do to make this easier is just copy this, so Control c or whatever button is, or depending on what keyboard you have, I'm just going to paste it in our downloads folder. I know this is a bit you know, dodgy, I could have left it there, but just to keep things a little bit simpler, we're going to copy those two files in the same directory where all our other files are located. So next up we're going to have to open up a terminal window, so you can do this on uh, uh, Mint 
by right clicking on the blank space and clicking open in terminal which is pretty easy otherwise you could press ctrl alt t and I think that's the same in Ubuntu and things like that but they may have changed that in another one I've tested elementary OS it is just super T so that is your start menu and T button and then you can just do the old CD squiggly forward slash downloads and that'll get you in your downloads folder so just navigate to the folder uh, or change directory to the folder or to the directory where fastboot and ADB are and we'll just leave that there for now another step we need to take on our phone is of course to enable OEM unlocking so go back to this about phone screen and we're going to tap on the build number to enable developer options here so once you have done that it's going to hit back you want to go to developer options and you want to make sure OEM unlocking is checked so it's going to look like that you want to turn it on and enable it after that you want to power off your device now keep in mind this process now unlocking the bootloader will erase all data on your phone so if you've just turned off your phone turn it back on and back up everything that you need and I do mean everything so grab your USB A to USB C cable plug that into your computer and on the phone you want to hold down this button combination here it's just power and volume down so you just want to hold that and that will get you into the bootloader and just leave it on start or any menu and we just want to plug in that USB cable in and we'll put it aside so what we need to here to type here is dot slash uh, to access the program uh, fastboot devices okay so after some brief searching very brief uh, you need to be you need to run it as sudo or change your command prompt into a uh, not command prompt terminal window into a root mode. So I guess that's easier because we are going to be typing a few commands here. So before, if you type in, I don't know if you just type in fastboot. Oops. Okay, so you need to type in dash fastboot like that, and I don't think it would run, but now it is. Okay, devices. So it says no permission down at the bottom there. So to fix this, or to actually run it, you can type in sudo dot slash fastboot devices and you can see it come under there. If you don't want to type sudo every time, you can type in sudo su. You will need to type in your sudo password, of course. I've already done that in this terminal instance. And you'll see the hashtag sign there. And now if you just type in fastboot devices, you won't need to, to keep typing in sudo. So we're going to do that for now. And you can see our device is here, that's our serial number, and it's connected in the fastboot mode here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to unlock the bootloader. So I'm going to type dot slash fastboot flashing space unlock, just like that. Hit enter. Now we need to go divert our eyes to the phone here. So it tells us a custom OS is not the original OS and unauthorized access that can happen. So um, it will erase all data right here and we're going to use the power button to hit yes and that'll erase our phone's internal storage and you'll have to set it up again so I'm going to hit start because we're going to need to copy over a particular file here we're going to need to copy over our SuperSU zip file and we're going to flash our TWRP afterwards so just wait for your phone to erase itself in that little recovery screen and once it's done that, it will turn all the way back up to Android and you're going to have to go through the setup wizard. So this time I would actually recommend setting it up with all your details and all that because it's most likely that you're not going to be changing the software unless you plan on flashing a ROM. Okay, so you can, you can see that our phone is turned back on and I haven't set this up properly. You might need to reconnect your USB cable to the computer and you're going to get this USB for charging. What's happened that? and make sure it says file transfers or select file transfers and that'll take us, we can close this extra home uh, window here and we're going to navigate to the internal storage you can see everything's gone again we're going to copy over this SuperSU file that we downloaded it could be a different version but at the time of recording the latest version is 2.72 we're going to copy that there just like that and we're going to do the same thing, we're going to turn off our device now we're going to yeah, turn it off and reboot it into the bootloader so unplug the USB as well so it doesn't go to that silly charging screen. We're going to hold power and volume down again for about 3 seconds. And that will be in the bootloader. We're going to plug it in once more. 
Now this time we're gonna flash our custom recovery TWRP. We'll close this extra folder again. I'm gonna use that exact same terminal window. Move it up a little bit. Now we're gonna move things a little bit side to side like that. So you can see our image, our custom recovery there, TWRP, TWRP, and we're gonna flash it now. So what you need to do is type in dot slash fastboot flash recovery. Leave a space on the end and drag in our image. That's what I'm used to doing on Windows. Hopefully this works. Cool. So it's written the recovery onto our phone. It means we can go back here, press our volume down button, or from the start here, one, two, until we get to recovery mode. Hit the power button to select it. Now we're gonna get this warning that our device can't be checked for corruption. Please lock the bootloader. This is absolutely normal once you unlock the bootloader. So please don't lock the bootloader after you flash the a custom recovery because you might, you'll probably likely end up with a very nice paperweight. It's important to have 100%, uh, you, you have to be 100% stock or factory, have a factory image. Now, this is probably irrelevant to me because I'm in Australia and there's no Android Pay or anything like that. But in the US, you might be inclined to uh, swipe allow modifications and install a systemless root. I'm not sure if that still works. You're going to have to look that up. Um, so I'm going to uh, swipe to allow modifications because we're going for a system-based root. And I don't know why I put my phone away. We're going to hit install. We're going to scroll down to the bottom and we can see our SuperSU file that we copied over earlier. We're going to swipe to flash just like that. We're going to wait for it to extract files, creating images, mounting partitions, patch up the boot image and all that. This shouldn't take too long, maybe a minute. So this is telling us that if TWRP doesn't recognize this uh, placement of SuperSU, uh, we are asked not to install it. Luckily, the latest versions of TWRP uh, take that in mind. So we're going to wait for our phone to boot up again. It shouldn't take too long. It was pretty quick last time. Also note, you're going to see the screen a little bit maybe, and your phone will maybe reboot a couple times within this process. So give it, to leave it alone until you're pretty certain it's been 15 minutes or so and you haven't seen any progress or you haven't reached your home screen. And you might have a problem then, but it will uh, reboot a couple times during the process and it says be sure not to interrupt it. Okay, so I got nothing on this phone, so it's pretty quick. We can scroll down, we have SuperSU. Follow me on Twitter, no thanks. I already do. So there we go, 2.72, it's free, it's working, otherwise it'll say binary missing. This is uh, not a hoax or anything like that. I wouldn't fool anyone. So that's it, guys. That's how you root your phone on the M what was it, MTC19T, Android 6.01 on the May update on a Linux-based computer. So, happy flashing guys, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.